Live from LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, I mean X and Twitch, not Instagram because sorry, it didn't work. I tried again. It's Revenings Wednesday. Welcome to Wednesday, Revenue Party people. I see you, Topher. I see you, Christopher Hardy. Remember, this show is not about us. It's about you. So we want to hear from you. Share your comments. Keep them coming. Let us know if we're doing good or not. I'm going to go ahead and get through the intro as quick as possible because, as you know, we've got hot topics, hot prizes, and a hot guests tonight. So let's get into it. Oh, promo code number one. I'm going to put this up right now. You're going to want to check it out. You're going to get a discount on Jesse O's course. You're going to be seeing this throughout the show, so you can come back to it. But I'm going to let Jesse talk about that a little bit. But if you use this special Wednesday code, you are not paying full price to the Jesse Owlets course. So check that one out. Tip jar. I always tell you guys, I'll, I'll pull it back up. I do always appreciate the, the dollars you send me. Thank you so much. And if you like my jacket, you know, I love my little tote. I'm wearing a little tote fur coat tonight. And all you got to do is scan that QR code if you're a lady and you're going to want to try the little tote app. You can curate your clothes by style, size, like a preference occasion. It's it's awesome. I mean, as a woman, it's hard to know what to wear all the time. And Latote makes it very easy for me. So get yourself a free bag of clothes and you can try them on. If you don't like them, you just send them right back. I am using StreamYard tonight. And so if you like what you're seeing, then I would love for you to also use StreamYard. I coach on StreamYard. So if you need help with it, let me know. And another thing is I am a Cherry Assistant affiliate. So if you are looking for a virtual assistant, big thank you to Cherry Assistant for sponsoring the show tonight. But you can use this QR code here to check out their website. And I'll be showing it throughout the show too if you don't catch it right now or you can pause it and catch it. But get yourself a virtual assistant. I used to struggle with virtual assistants interns so much. And DJ Kim is like and his partner are doing a lot of really great work at Cherry Assistant and they've helped me a lot. So definitely check them out. They're running a really smooth operation over there. And you're going to want to check out the Revitting newsletter and High Level. High Level is my tool. It's the one tool I use to run my business. It's my CRM. It's my website. It's my social media scheduling platform. It's my automation. It's my funnels. It's everything that I do is in High Level. And I am so proud that High Level has sponsored this show because this is an awesome app. And not only that, if anyone's trying to run an agency out here, get Go High Level because we all know how hard it is to scale with just providing services. So if you add software to the service, you're creating a 
stickiness for your customers to make them want to stay with you. So definitely check it out. If you use that code, you can get 30 days free or just check it out and get 30 days free to like play with some new software. Um, but, but let me move on. Sponsorships are available throughout the year. We're doing monthly, but also annual. So feel free to check it out. Reveting.com slash sponsorships. Prices are listed and you can just literally pay right on the website if you so decide. And here are some of our prizes, but I'm going to show you some bigger images while it's just me here on the screen. Throughout the night, I'll be showing them on the show. But for prize one, tag high level to enter to win this awesome swag pack over here. You get a hat, a couple of really awesome things. Prize two is 10 hours of free virtual assistant service. Now, if you've won this prize and you've had the Cherry Assistant VAs help you, I'd love to hear from you in the comment. And, you know, I just heard today that someone from the Whiskey Wednesday audience ended up signing up with Cherry Assistant. And that makes me so happy. And it's because Cherry Assistant's doing really great work. Prize three is Open Draft. They just launched recently and we've been giving them away now, lucky enough, um, here on Wednesday for a while. So some of you have tried it. If you have not, tag Open Draft. If you would like help with your blogs, Open Draft is marketer approved, i.e. me. And I say that because it's not just like writing a blog in chat GPT. You can plug in your keywords, you can optimize it, and it doesn't do it like old school, like 2017 style. It's it's actually legit. Oh, and uh, headset advisor. Um, I really, I was gonna wear my mic tonight. I'm, I'm I'm working on it. Headset advisor. If you're if you're watching, this is an awesome mic. I wear it during the day. The only thing is, is when I'm on the show. It, I just, it's like all over and I like do my hair and stuff. So that's the only reason I don't wear it. But it's, if you want a headset on Headset Advisor, let us know, plug it in the comments. Who's won a headset? And how do you like it? Because this headset that we've been giving away this year is wireless. And prize five is lavender. Many of you already have lavender because it's that awesome. But if you don't have lavender, here's your chance to try it out for free. Just put hashtag email in the comments to enter to win. And then taking up space. This is my group coaching program. We meet four days a week. Monday is marketing strategy. Tuesday is the glass ceiling shatterer framework. Wednesday is MarTech and Friday is LinkedIn. We cover all sorts of topics, building courses, going on LinkedIn, high level, all sorts of things. So sign up and join us. It's a lot of fun. And prize seven, you're going to hear from the guests here in just a minute about these prizes. I like I, I'm just so grateful. Um, this is amazing. These prizes you definitely want to enter to win. These are going to be popular. So tag Lead Magic throughout the show for 250,000 data credits on Lead Magic. That is insane. Jesse Owlette is one of the most kind and giving people out here on LinkedIn. So you are going to want to tag LinkedIn. I'm sorry, tag Lead Magic to enter to win that. But also that course I was talking about earlier, if you want it for free, here's your chance to win your seat. So when you're tagging Lead Magic, you're also entering to win one free seat to his workshop, which you'll be hearing about throughout the show. And of course, Rev Genius. Who here's in Rev Genius? Who like went to the Rev Genius page? You filled out the form and then you're in the Slack community. Like, who are you? Let us know. We love Rev Genius people here. And Jared with Rev Genius. Another one of the most giving people on LinkedIn is sharing with you a spreadsheet of data. So we'll let you let him talk to you about that a little bit more and 30 minutes of a knowledge transfer. So definitely tag Rev Genius to enter to win those prizes. Who's the guru of the week? I don't even know, but we're about to find out. And next week, be sure to register because we've got some big names on here. We're going to be talking about email all month in February. And you're going to find out why. If you haven't, if you've been living under a rock and you don't know what's going on, you're about to find out tonight. But we have some awesome guests on tonight. So let's bring them in. We've got Jesse Owlette and Jared. Thank you both so much for being here. Thanks for having us. <laughs> of course. Well, you guys know the drill. I put a two minute clock up and I ask you to fill that two minutes by telling us about yourself. Tell us your story. People like to hear your background. Where were you born? Where did you come from? And what led you to Lead Magic and Rev Genius? Jared, I'm going to pull you up and start with you. 
Oh, we can't hear you. My homie. Oh, I have it on mute, of course. So uh, where, where does my story start? Um, I spent seven years at FedEx with short hair. If you look in the comments here, I'm, I'm posting from my YouTube, uh, apparently LinkedIn. That's, that's how I looked when I entered the startup world uh, about 10 years ago. It's been crazy. I've had a lot of experiences. Um, had my first exit, which was awesome. Um, the company I worked for when I slept on the floor in that office building. So something good came of that. Uh, I was out of a job when COVID hit and I met this Jesse Ouellette character uh, who is nothing but kind and sweet and um, built Rev Genius because I saw a gap in the space. There were some communities that were paid. Um, there were some content sites, but there wasn't really a community for everyone at no cost. So stupid me, I created it. Jesse rooted me on all the time, helped me Friday nights at 10 p.m., my girlfriend yelling at me um, to get off the phone, figuring out how to hack stuff together. Um, and yeah, just asked about 300 people a day uh, manually to join. About 30 plus of them said yes. And if you do the math, it's like a thousand a month. And Along the way, people realized some growth hacks, like they wanted to announce it on LinkedIn, which we basked in, of course, and um, and we go into all of that. But here today with like 80,000 members, 40,000 in Slack and 40 more thousand uh, that haven't gotten in yet that are in our email list. That's incredible, Thank Jared. You. You're absolutely incredible. Um, but you didn't use up all your time. I, I put the keywords okay, up on Okay, so the more. More. Um, if you want I, to, I didn't want you to think that I was cutting I, you short. I also uh, recently launched uh, the collab newsletter as like a, a fun yes. side project um, where I could figure out. Uh, and, and the collab came about because I see all of these people, solopreneurs hustling, whether they're creators with brand partnerships or, or influencers or whatever you want to call that, uh, fractionals, consultants, advisors, all of this. And uh, realize that the future is giving people more opportunities to make money or equity if they choose, like on their own, away from uh, their core company. Collaboration, if you're both under the same company, is for the good of the company, not necessarily for the good of the individual. I know everyone on this panel probably agrees. There's a forcing function that happens when you're an individual and then collaborating with a company where you're, you know, have more equity in the situation and you're you're building both of your businesses so the collab is you know featuring you know I, my last article was uh michael jordan the og collaborator um his story with nike is well documented how they both got fucking rich and um and and that's cool and that's what it's all about so i'm diving into you know some brands like leveraging creators but but more in a partnership way not just paying x number of dollars for a post if you get offered that, take the money. Don't get me wrong, but like it's not mutually good. You need longer term deals, and and I, don't I explore know if I'd that say there. Take the money. I don't know if I agree maybe there. maybe not. So what's cool is I started about four months ago, and I'm and I'm seeing like if my old growth hacks still work, and testing some new ones, and we're up to thirty five hundred members in four months. Um, I've gotten probably thirty five off LinkedIn posts. So like everything is like. Everything is outbound. I have an intern probably uh, messaging people right now manually. I will use Cherry <laughs> Assistant. That is more effective. Uh, actually, no, my intern is not because it's uh, UK time and he had to go to bed at 9.15. Ah, poor yeah, intern. Bad. Well, he's awesome. Uh, I've seen his LinkedIn. Awesome. It's incredible. If you are not subscribed should... to Jared's newsletter, Jared, how do they subscribe? Uh, jaredrobin.com. I, I told you I'd use jaredrobin.com. I wanted to use Ghost originally. I'm a beehiver now. Um, check it out. Beehiver. I just changed the colors. Beehiver and the collab has a bee, but we will be right back to that because Jesse, we need to hear your intro and I don't know how you're going to fit it in two minutes, but take it away. Hey, we'll try to keep it short here. So I was a sales rep for 15 years. Uh, well, did, did, uh, Ran on the sales team as well, uh, you know, VP head of sales kind of thing. And then I uh, just got sick of it, really. I uh, wasn't able to kind of modify the tools that I wanted to. Couldn't really, really stuck in my, you know, and I just didn't want to deal with it anymore. So I said, all right, well, if I keep complaining, I'm going to be miserable. 
about this and I decided to just build my own company that I could do whatever I wanted to. So I decided during COVID as Jared was talking and, you know, built my own company, SaaS products. I uh, got a couple of products out there now, one that helps you find out who's on your website, one that helps you with data enrichment and things like that. We're kind of merging them together and building really a common platform, but, uh, you know, I've been helping a lot of people run another group in WhatsApp called uh, the SaaS Yacht Club that a lot of people are in. Uh, if you know, you know how to get on there. Some people are in it. Some people aren't. If you don't know how to get there, you're probably never going to get there. And I'm not going to tell you, but if you figure it out, you can figure it out. There's probably some people around here that know how to get there, but you know, just trying to help people out. I found that, uh, you know, nobody ever became poor by giving and, uh, that's what you do. You just kind of figure out a way to give through discipline, generosity, and do what you can do to help people and get them back to the primary inbox. So we do here. It's incredible. And I am grateful to be a part of the community. And that's where I met both of you. And yep. it's been just all uphill since I've joined the SAS Yacht Club. So definitely, if you haven't figured out how to get there, then you definitely want to. But we've got some hot topics to get into tonight. And we've got the goats here to talk to us about email. And we'll be talking about outbound email. And we're going to be talking about newsletters. So Jesse, as the goat himself, top voice, email voice, surviving the lead gen Blue apocalypse. Jack. What do we need to do? Mastering email, spam, and targeting. Yeah. So I try not to share all of my tactics out there, but on on the like clear sort of you know normal places where the normal world hangs out. But if you go to the WhatsApp group, there's a lot in there. But what happens right now is your uh, your domain name is now the uh, it, it's it's the the problem now, right? So you're gonna have to protect your your domain name. So. If you're working at a company that actually is sending from their primary domain name, you probably want to go talk to the CEO. This is a CEO problem. It's not, it's, you can't have somebody simple in like your, you know, you, not that your ops team is a bunch of simple people, but it's, you got to go to somebody who can actually make a decision. <laughs> right. And what's happened is people have thought that they could just blast send out of the one thing that they look at when they're deciding if you're going to be in a spam folder or not. And remember, if you're in spam, you're wasting your time. You're completely wasting your time. If you're, don't send another email from your primary domain name, right? Just stop doing it. It's a complete waste of your time. You're never going to get anywhere. Don't do it. Don't appease it. Don't, don't, if somebody tells you to do it just to keep your job, don't do it. Just tell them you're not going to do it. It's a waste of your time. You're going to hurt your company's reputation. Uh, there's really no other easier way to say it. Uh, people have been doing it. They're still doing it. I don't know why it's sort of, it's, it, it's, it's weird. I, I still can't figure it out. There's enough uh, text out there that's obviously kind of proven it. And I, I don't know. I mean, I still can't figure it out. I mean, it's, it's shocking to me. Yeah. So, it, it's, it's just, it's wild that you've got people who have very educated, like I talk to people all day about this and, you know, they have very educated people at their company, like great, you know, resilient market leaders, tons of experience, led teams. And then when it comes to email and they're talking about their sales team, mainly sending emails, I just talked to the leader and I'm like, what is going on? Why are you, why do you think you can do that? And I just like want to sit them down and I want to just shake them. Right. Like it, it just, I don't think they understand what their problem is to solve. Right. If their problem is to get conversion mm -hmm. And I, I, I go in there and they're blasting from their primary. They've got no oversight of it. It's like, what you're just destroying the most valuable asset in your company. It's your domain name. Like there's nothing more valuable. And yeah. I just, it just shocks me. I mean, to this day, I still can't figure it out. Uh, it's, it's sort of, I don't know. I mean, there's communities like Rev Genius where they talk about this too, but I just, Jared, maybe you can help me here. I don't know. <laughs> I think I think people are looking. Uh, they're not understanding things, and um, and it goes past the email, right? Like people that want to start communities just for demand gen, they do bad stuff in in different ways, right? Like nothing like starting a community that you're just going to sell to with your product and 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 let them know that uh, you need to build trust, right? I have twenty two yeah, emails no. right now uh rotating myself uh i i have uh jesse and um the pirates to to thank for setting me up correctly and uh 
and I'm rocking it out. Nothing's going from jaredrobin.com, I promise, outside of uh, some nice correspondence. That's great. That is yeah, great. it's just such a it's such a just a dishonest thing to just send out of your, your primary email. You're gonna hurt everybody in your company. You're gonna hurt your marketing team. You've got a great marketing team, right? Like, why would you want their emails to go to spam too? You're gonna ruin. You're just taking out a bunch of brand equity out of your company. I just don't. I can't. Oh. It's something I'm. You know, and that's where I. Uh, I guess the reason I'm passionate about it is I was actually um, working at a company and uh, I told them I wouldn't do it and they fired me for it. So. Uh, as a result, I don't work for, um, you know, companies like that anymore. Of course I had to start and I look, uh, you know, I could have just sucked it up and did it. Uh, a lot of people would have, but I didn't. Um, and I won't, I wouldn't do that. There's no way I would just conform and just do that. That's just like not really a fun or interesting thing to do. So, uh, yeah. So Jesse, we, we had, had questions. So there was one I saw earlier from Mark Jero. He was basically like, well, where's the information? What's the information we need to give to our CEO? Like if we go to our CEO, what do we tell them? Well, yeah. it really fundamentally starts with one, one thing, right? Nobody knows. There's nobody, there's no guru even, you know, that will tell you if you're actually in spam on the other side. Okay. There's no way you physically know that, right? So if you start with that, what happens is the assumption is if you don't know you're in spam, you're basically in spam, right? So like the person on the other end is thinking, well, I'm not seeing a message and my system's telling me it's been delivered, but you don't know because remember, you can't see their inbox, right? That's a security violation. You wouldn't be able to see their inbox. The only people who can see the other person's inbox is their IT team, you know, their HR team on it and the person who's getting the email. Now, that's really where you've got to start. So everyone's assumption, right, when they do this is it says deliverable and it says 99%. You know, in the big sequencing products, they don't tell you what that actually means and they don't want to tell you because if they told you, you would stop, you wouldn't buy their products anymore, their products and services. They would not have them anymore, right? Like the whole product, everybody would cancel all of those products. So what deliverable in my mind means, right, like if you have that word as a definition, it means the person on the other end received it in their primary inbox, Right. And there's an opportunity for them to read your message and decide if they want to unsubscribe or whatever. Right. And I know Ryan Reiser has this funny video and he's making fun of me in that. But, you know, those are those are MacBooks and, you know, those are sequencers or whatever. It's cute, but it's like uh, Wolf on Wall Street or Wolf on Wall Street. But, you know, look, the person on the other end doesn't know or, or you don't know if you got it to their primary inbox. So what you have to do is you have to test through replies, getting replies. And if your reply rates are below 5%, and I'm not talking about opens, right? Let's not go there because that'll get that'll get just another discussion going, but it's replies you need. The replies confirm your, your you know, and I'm talking really not the like out of office ones, even though those can help a little bit. I'm talking about the ones that say not interested or interested or the ones that say, uh, you know, take me off your list or whatever violent vulgar things that the person wants to write in that email, those are actually good for you, right? Uh, we don't read them anymore. We block, uh, we personally, we block all uh, unsubscribes and we don't read any of those, of course, but um, there's no reason to for us, but uh, other people want to read them. It's just kind of like the way they do it. But anyways, the point is, is that if you're not seeing those types of messages, it means you're in spam. At anything under 5%, shut the campaign down. It's You're just wasting your time. Do something more productive in your company. Find another hobby in the company and find something else that you can do because it just it's just not going to work. You can't waste your time doing it. You're better off choosing another angle. Get on LinkedIn. Get on the phone or whatever. Those are the things you want to do. If you're doing email, you want to make sure you're getting a 5% response rate. And if you're not, just shut the thing down. End the program. Call somebody else and just stop doing it. Don't waste your time. Interesting. And so like many people, they're not even seeing their reply rates like you do in some of these other tools like Smart Lead or Instantly, where you can actually see the number or the percentage of people replying. Um, so if you're not seeing that, then maybe you need to look at your software too and get a different tool, which Jesse, you're so good at tech stack and you are like the goat when it comes to anything automation, email, lead gen, right? So this course that you're offering here, I know you're going to be covering 
automation. You're going to be going over clay. Could you tell the listeners? Yeah. Like, how will this this help one's them? more, uh, this one's targeted really towards building the sequence and the audience. Uh, like, so the relevant message, what we're doing, it's a cohort. So what will happen, basically, it's not like a um, course you just get in and you're downloading it or like doing it at your own time. It's like a live workshop kind of thing. So it's there's commitment there. But uh, we're just going to have 50 people. And basically, what we're going to do is just show them how to really use uh, clay and, and some of the tools to bring in and build the campaigns. That's one of the things I think a lot of people are struggling with right now. Uh, you know, there's some good people out there, Eric, uh, you know, some other people that do this as well or do clay and work at clay or whatever tools like that, right? Not, it doesn't, the tool isn't really what it is. It's more of the process on how you take in data from an API and then you could start to put that into your email campaign to make it more relevant. And what I see a lot of though, is I see a lot of people out there that are like traditional sales leadership and they'll, they'll say, well, I, you know, these are AI messages. I could tell whatever, really the good ones are, you could, you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell. So like, that's the hard part is that there's a group of people that think that, that all of the bad ones mean it doesn't work, but that group is a very funny group because like they've never, they don't know, they can't decipher what's real or not anymore. Right. So I'll tell you what, if I'm sending you a cold email that came from a AI generated, you would have no idea that it was an AI generated and you couldn't build it better yourself. And I'll tell you why, because you have API calls that you can make that will pull in additional information that would take you too long to research on a one-on-one -on -one basis. So there's no chance that you could write a better email because you wouldn't have all of the information that this would have in it, right? So that's what I just, you know, like there's a, there's a group out there and I, I see I see it everywhere. I don't understand that group. I just clearly don't understand what they're doing. But it's it's yeah. this group and they basically just say like it's not going to work it's ai generated i can tell it's not about the it's it's about the one-to-one -one changes of the email the email changes on a one-to-one -one basis so that group and even some of the people who make i'm thinking about some names right now in my head but they make email technology they're still saying that the ai generated stuff it it doesn't work and I, and I I start to like I hear it too I hear it all the time don't understand what they're talking about on this I stuff. even hear it from pirates like don't use so much AI yeah. why are you using AI and it's just like I don't, uh, I don't... It's, it's 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 obnoxious at this point it's just like they're going to lose their jobs anyways of course because yeah. everyone they're going to get replaced by machines but there's going to be great people that are operating the machines and that's what you want to be doing in the in the new the new world and that's what we're going to try to do but I just have to kind of suss that out and, you know, show them that, you know, what's up, right? Like, it's not, it's not like, a, I'm, I'm not asking for permission. Anymore so in your course, that's what people are going to learn. They're yeah. going to learn. You're going to yeah. like, so yeah. when I come out of that course, I'm going to be able to send cold email that is written for me. Yes. Yep, exactly. And you'll be able to build a template. So like, let's just say, you know, you were, and you know, Jared actually was, one, believe it or not, Jared, you know, Jared was one of the first adopters of clay jared adopted clay before i think everybody even me so it's it's kind of funny but like tools like clay tools like um uh, google sheets there's ways to do it in google sheets there's ways to do it in Airtable, and this is the starting point of really understanding how to go automate everything i mean you can by the way you can if you want to go spend a bunch of time and you want to go make calls and do that that's a more effective that is definitely a more effective for you as a one-to-one -one sales rep. But if you want to scale a business and you want to get to the next level of what you're doing personally, and you want to do that across, then you can definitely use automation. You're not making calls with automation right now. I don't think it, the, the technology isn't mature enough to do that. So you're not doing that. But if you really want to free up your time, the best way to do it is to learn how to build one-to-one -one campaigns that are relevant to the person based on the time that they get the email. Or, or message, whatever medium you're sending it through, it really doesn't matter. But if they get that email and it's one-to-one -one and it's targeting a problem, they pretty much have to respond. Yeah. Right? So, or they will. I mean, the, the probability is good. I have so many questions on this, but we have to get into the second topic. Yep. And that course I had up here, it's $750 is like, I would say it's... That's a steal. I know there's going to be some people out there who disagree with me, but just imagine the amount of money or the sales you will make after you learn these steps and these tools. So like, but if you use and this code, you're not cool. paying seven fifty. You're paying five nine five sixty nine ninety nine. So get the get the deal and sign up for this course. 
I will definitely be there. I'm going to be trying to learn about it, but we got to talk about community. So I'm going to switch gears. Let's do it. Community growth strategy. Both of you have the best communities in the SaaS world. Let's just, let's just put it out there. If you need to join a community, these are the two people that you need to be reaching out to following, follow their people. And Jared, kick us off. Community growth strategies. What do we need to know these days? Yeah. Harnessing the future and potential of communities. Oh, man. Um, loaded question. But, you know, it, it starts with creating something that the people need. Right. Um, a, a gap in the space. Don't just create the, the 59th sales community unless you have a specific niche in there that you're addressing. When I started Rev Genius, the gap that there was, there wasn't a space for everybody, revenue leaders, like uh, Revenue Collective at the time, spectacular organization. Um, they were just for senior leaders. Uh, there was no space with everybody. So created it, um, put it out there, um, localized it, and that was great. Jesse created um, the pirate ship and there was no space that was like super technical on the outbound with people that were growth hacking demand gen and things to that effect and that's why it really took off because he he really honored that uh that mission and that purpose and and created a really great giving culture there and that's another thing um giving is critical in community building so many people who are starting um spaces know exactly what they want they know exactly what they want and it's pipeline, it's leads, it's revenue. Great. That's obvious stuff. Uh, do you know exactly what the people who are going to make your community want? And if you don't, you need to talk to them and you need to start super small until, until you get that. Because once you truly empathize with the people that are going to make up the community, then you're going to drop exactly what they need with all the nuance and really, really connect and build that trust. Yeah. That's incredible, Jared. You've done an awesome job with Rev Genius. I think everybody in the comments is in Rev Genius. I'd love to hear if you're not in Rev Genius because I don't know how many people are in there now, Jared. Uh, too many. Yeah, like uh, eighty thousand. Not too many. We have room for for plenty more. Um, I'll, I'll I'll be working uh, twenty seven hours a day, <laughs> trying to appease. So, um, in terms of like how to figure out what your audience wants in the community. Have either of you figured out like, or have you started asking people who leave your community? Like, why did you leave or do you not go there? So I, oh, yeah, I'll let, let just, well, I was going to say I do. Um, it's important to ask, but it's also important to listen probably more so, right? Because people are your friends and they're going to give you certain answers why they're not active anymore. And, and, and they might be partially right, but like you need to read between the lines and like understand the true reasons. And that's by listening and, and seeing the space and like everybody, when they get to a certain size, they're more active on LinkedIn because it drives more business for them. Cool. That's logical. Do you want to add that to your space or not? Like, do you want to take the L there? You can't be everything to everyone. That's a good point. What were you going to say on that, Jesse? Yeah, so I'm I'm a big believer on the like escape the competition through, you know, authenticity. So what I did is I just said I'm just going to you know, I think somebody smarter than me said that too. Uh but anyways, the 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 point is is that like in there I'm just going to it's not going to I'm just not going to change anything, right? Uh and I'm going to basically, you know, the things that I've sort of like adopted around like, you know, keeping a, a good place for anybody's welcome to talk about any topic, but everything's sort of backed by science. People can have reasonable arguments. Also, like we, we try to keep like all anything that's like sort of an area that we're not equipped to handle, like anything political or anything that's like sort of they're going to get people in a, in a different type of conversation that we're not, we're just not equipped to handle. There's plenty of places that can handle conversations like that. So we've we sort of limited it there. Uh, but what we've done is we've really made it about growth and, and like, I mean, really what's evolved is that the average the people who are doing sales and marketing and there's a lot more people doing it now because that's really all that matters now and what they want is they want to know what tools they should put together and as humans we're all tool builders right we would not be the established 
uh, species on Earth if we weren't, right? Because we would lose to every single, there's a lot of species that are a lot, you know, more aggressive than us. So uh, it's just, you know, I guess really through and through, we just talk about tools, growth hacking, like sales, marketing, the tools that are in there. You know, you don't bring really anything in there that it, it gets called out pretty quick. I've even been humbled a few times. On yeah. Stage. I run yeah, the group and someone's cool. talking about like, you know, like they'll be talking about some tool that's like a direct competitor. And I'm like, nope, this is great. I think this is what it needs to happen. And, and it, and I don't, and not that there's like a, any real direct competitive or whatever, but it's just, you know, that's what I don't even, I let, I let that part go. And I think we, you just constantly can get your answers in there, but I just, I'm not going to change anything. And I don't really want to make it that big. If, if they want, if people want to join, they can join. And then, people who want to leave can leave you know what i mean at any point and come back too if they want i don't but it can be addictive yeah. too so that's the other thing i've even thought about leaving, got so. feedback i had someone leave my <laughs> women's community which by the way if anyone is interested in joining a community of women and sales marketing and entrepreneurship let me know we'll get you in there um but one of the comments i got or someone left yesterday and i asked her why and it was that she it wasn't that she didn't like the community it was that she couldn't find her voice within it. And like, she didn't know how she could contribute. So what would you guys say to those lurkers in these communities about just taking that step and, and, and getting involved or, or even to the community owners like me and yourselves, like how do we help those lurkers want to step up? Yeah, I don't actually, I, I actually don't even. Uh, yeah. It's a hard question. You know, it's, I know it sounds funny. I mean, this is uh, people who know me might, understand this but I, I don't even honestly i'm not even really uh tracking that to be honest with you if i'm leave, not either i just happen to ask just because i want to know like why why would you leave yeah I, no i mean I'm, I, you know at this point i'm not look and I, it might maybe maybe someday i'll be regretting this but um you know i don't really even sort of like hey if they're there or they're there they're there no, I normally like, don't care. And and honestly, if you don't want to be there, it's good that you're not there. But yeah, for me, like getting the data out of there, God, you're make it better. I don't even want you in there. So just leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. For sure. Like if no pressure. Like if you don't want to be Close here, the door hit you on the way out either. So I it's think, like so I I I love your answers. Um I would add um, <laughs> who cares? Get out of know, here. <laughs> a, a, a way to make everybody feel comfortable is being active in the community and responding to lots of people's stuff, right? Like, and and obviously not playing favorites or or whatnot, and like and like being helpful to everybody. Um, mm. It's an impossibility, but like people see when you try it, right? Like when when you're trying. Yeah. Um, and that, and that goes, that goes a far way, right? Like, um, you know, like little things and, and talking about like why people leave, like Rev Genius had too much engagement people left. And then I realized like people were also spamming in the DM. So I just, uh, made this post last week that was like, okay, there's a zero tolerance policy. If somebody mails me a screenshot of, of a clear mass message, I'm kicking you out. No questions asked. So what happened was eight people got kicked out like that day, um, no problem. And new voices just started speaking that I had never heard because they felt safer. And and people mm. were raising their hands like, hey, could I moderate, right? And, and, and that moderation opportunity tends to be the person that's a lurker that wants to contribute but might not be active. So creating like a space, allowing people to volunteer for even behind the scenes stuff makes them feel like they're a part of it. And that's big. Yeah, that's a really good point. And you're right. When, once the, the bad apples leave, I've seen this in multiple communities. You all, That's when the lurkers start to come out of the shadows because they're scared. Such they great point. People are allowed. We have to get into this we third walk topic. The paywall, Frank, where they have, to, they have to leave and then they have to come back, but they have to go through the paywall first. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Bit. You value what you pay for. So... <laughs> You know what? Maybe they'll value uh, it. The paywall plank. You got to make them pay, Jared. I think you're going to have to put a. I, I've been a big fan. Of, I, I've always said this to people. I think Rev Genius should put a paywall up right on the main. Oh, we've we've we, 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 I, I don't understand about why it's still so, like I would I would paywall that thing to the door, right? Like make that thing lock that thing down. Tell everyone they're not getting any candy for for for, for <laughs> so, Easter. So they're there's, gonna be there's, like, there's 
there's definitely the school of thought too big to paywall um as recently as this year (laughs) the last 30 days i'm like let's just let's just charge everybody 20 bucks a month just Hit him with it. Do see it. what happens. You know how much you know how much I uh, see. I, I've always been a huge fan of getting I want to get the Rev Genius on a full paywall. I want everyone that's in there right now yes. to get a paywall uh stripe notification that's coming into their DMs that's saying, like, this community is changing to a pay a paid service. We are booting everybody out who doesn't pay in the next 30 so, days. I would love that. I would so sit you back. Know what, and, you know what's dude, a vibe? Um it's pretty good super pack. Pack. So Super Path, what they did was they just paywalled like the best channels. You could get in, no, but then you have just to pay go all in. Shut, shut the door on everybody, I think, and make them take it off their LinkedIn profile as well. Mm. You got to pay for that. <laughs> yeah, this no, is, this is good. I mean, working. we could get into this <laughs> all night. Just let it rip, dude. Don't it. even try to. Don't even try. Just, just, just take it down. Just go right down for it and see what happens. Make it like a dollar, though, you know, so everyone's like. Okay, I'll pay a dollar. So everyone in the comments, how much do you think you should have to pay to be in Rev Genius? I would love to hear that from you. And we're going to be getting into this third topic right after these messages. If you have a business. Mattress anymore. Uh Uh-oh. Technical errors. After these messages. If you have a business or a side project, you need a virtual assistant. If you want free time or fun time, you need a virtual assistant. Virtual assistants can do everything from answering emails, managing your calendar, or even calling your mom. I run my own agency, I have e-commerce stores, and I still have time to travel, hang out with friends and family, and even pick up new hobbies because my virtual assistants take up my day-to-day work. If you're interested in trying out Virtual Assistant, play our game with Whiskey Wednesdays and enter the prize to see if you win 10 hours with one of our best virtual assistants. Thanks, Whiskey Wednesdays, for having us. Why my video isn't playing? I'm having issues with my high level video. So instead. Great to see you. Hope you're enjoying your intermission. Grab a little drink. I want to tell you about my favorite app. You are looking at my app, connect.reviting.com. But no, that's not the one I'm going to tell you about. So if you're seeing this, you're getting a sneak peek at something special. What I'm telling you about is this is the whole reason I am here and I didn't spend all my money up front in the beginning on HubSpot. I made a decision to not use HubSpot even though I love HubSpot, it's a great tool. But what I found when I went into business for myself was that if I would have continued to pay what was owed for HubSpot, it would have been really hard on me in my very first few months of business. But high level makes it possible for people like me who are starting a business to get started. It gets you everything you need. It's my CRM. It's my email. I built my website on there. I built a course on there. And I'm about to show you how I schedule all my posts across social channels on there. Yes, I'm only one person, but I get to have all of my marketing and all of my sales in one house. Thank you, high level. I would go to click new post and I can choose my social channels. So when you see me posting across channels on all the company channels, we've got the Reviting TikTok, we've got the Reviting Instagram, we have Reviting on Facebook. You know, we can click this and boom, I'll write a post and it'll go out on all those channels. Now I can even, I used to have my clients all in here. Now they have all their own separate accounts. So if you had multiple accounts, like your employer's account and your account, you can have all of those in one high level. Depending on the platform that you're posting on, you want to make it native for that platform. So be careful about posting across channels, but you can get a lot done with just one post going out to places. Schedule my first comment. Like if you want to join, click here. 
And then I do use the advanced options because I like to, I like analytics and data. I like to track what's happening. So I categorize all my posts. High level is the way to get started with your business. And not only that, you can scale with it. I've talked to business owners now who've been in business several years using high level. Thank you, high level, for making business so much easier for me. I am so glad that video ended up working because, um, yeah, that, that would have been hard, but I would have talked about high level for two minutes, but I didn't have to. So now we can get into AI magic. So we've talked about the lead gen apocalypse. We've talked about community. And now we're talking about AI. Jesse, you are like the AI guru. I mean, I, I call you the AI every or the guru everything, Jesse. Like, um, but but full of sin, like AI magic. What do we need to do? Like you were talking about this a little bit. I'm going to put your course back up here because we're going to be learning about this in your course. Um, but yeah, can you kick us off on this? Yeah, topic? so I think there's a, a, a real benefit to using AI in your sales process. And what you really have to do, though, is there's a couple of things you have to avoid right now. You have to avoid, first of all, there's a group that's saying like these emails or this doesn't work. It's just not working. You kind of have to have, like ignore that group completely. That That's the group of the past. They're gone. They're going to be anxious. Nobody wants to learn about of discovery call frameworks anymore that are getting posted out there, right? Like that group's just gone. Then you have another group that's sort of come in and they have a little bit of a social media following on like chat GPT. And they're just like, here's a couple of prompts that you can use. And then most of the shit's just copy and pasted, regurgitated and like, it's just garbage, right? And what really good ones are doing, uh, what some of the really good ones are doing, they're finding ways to use really APIs and, and sort of the, the prog programmatic interface of, of, of another application and bring in sort of uh, data that can be used to provide insights into a problem, right? So if you're, I'll give you, I can give you an example. So if you're, if you're a company that sells to companies that, uh, you know, you're selling, let's say you're selling like some sort of marketing platform or something like that, for you to know the ad spend of a company or the technologies that a company is adopting. Like I'll give you an example. If a company is adopt putting a LinkedIn pixel on their website and they're putting a um, the Google, uh, you know, they're upgrading their Google analytics uh, on their website. That is a pretty good indicator. They're probably going to start to run ads or they're going to start to do some more like programmatic ad buys and things like that. So that alone is a lot of the times an indicator for something that's happening. So if you're able to call that out on a one-to-one -one basis and you're specific about the problem, you're, you actually have a relevancy to one-to-one -to -one really is what you need to look for. If you're able to do that on a, on a basis where you don't have everyone's because everyone will say like, you can't scale that. There's no way you could ever do that. Yes, you can. Right now, that's where we're at now, right? There's some great people out there. I actually saw one the other day that was a really, really smart one. Um, it was actually an engineer actually who built it. It was a it was like a clay uh, workflow through Cloudflare where they were doing something really cool, and it was just like easy to copy. But it was like they were taking local reviews and they were telling somebody about their their local reviews, or you know with ad, with if you know their ad spend, you can tell them, hey, I saw your ad spend went up. Like if you are specific about the problem on a one to one basis, it makes it so much easier to convert people because they're like wow, this person actually did their research and they're relevant. Now, if they tell you to F off, they're not going to be as mean about it. They're also probably going to say, hey, I'm not interested right now, but this was a great email. Those are the types of emails you get. So for all of the people out there who are saying, well, email doesn't work, just hit spam. You're just spamming and waiting for that 3% of the market to respond. No, you're not. It's much bigger than 3% because most people don't know they have a problem until you present it to them in a provocative way. And that's what I think this Chet Holmes crap that's kind of going around is about is like they're just talking about like hey there's only three percent of the market ready to buy that's completely bs completely bs it's because they haven't had a provocative sales per sorry a provocative um outbound motion sent their way they don't have the relevancy that ai can actually generate for you if you know what you're doing and this is where i just see so many of these sort of 
you know, like the gurus of LinkedIn, they're, they're just, they're always there. They're always saying, Oh, make calls. You lazy jerk. You know, it's, it's just, it's obnoxious. I mean, they just don't understand it. So, um, you know, I'd like to humble them. They're welcome to take the course as well. I'll, I'll make sure that they will have a different opinion at, at the end of it and that's it, but it's real. So it's, it's just one of those things. I mean, I, I hate it when they're wrong, but it would, they would be completely wrong when I, when I show them. Yeah. And they probably don't have a personal brand and they probably don't have a community. There are a lot of gurus out there doing things the old way, but like this, this course that you're doing, like if just imagine if we got some of these gurus in your course, Jesse, like their minds would be blown. Ryan Reiser, it's going to have the free, I'm going to give him a free ticket if he wants. I'd like, I'd like to, I'll put him, we'll put him, uh, Ryan, uh, anybody, uh, put Justin Middleton, the whole group, round them up and bring them in and I'll teach them how to do it. And they'll be, they'll be, they'll be happy about it. I think they'll learn something. Yeah, for it, sure. It, it requires them swallowing their pride though. Mm. How do you get people to swallow their pride? I think Justin actually has some great content. I, I'm talking more on the other side. It's, it's sort of the, like, just hop on the phones and think it's going to be all good again. I don't think that works anymore. You can't, the problem is you can't hire 50 of those people and scale your business. Right. Mm. So like it's, as a, as somebody who's looking at it from a sales perspective, it makes total sense. And I agree with them. Right. If you're a salesperson, you better get on the damn phone. However, if you're not a salesperson and you're a business owner and you're sitting there like, how do I hire 50 Justin Middleton, Ryan Reiser? It's, it's, it's a hard challenge, right? You better hire Apex because you bet you know, at least you got some people who want to be there. Right. They, they have a culture there that people show up and they want to be there every day. The problem is most of these companies can't build that culture. And that culture is hard to build right now, right? Like that's that's the problem, right? Yeah. That's why that model is very difficult right now, but it's something that you should talk to them about because they could probably help you. And, and picture uh, not having product market fit or a product that barely works. You're like an early company <laughs> and your, your boss tells you to go on the phones. Like yeah. at what point do you say, fuck this shit? <laughs> and, and start spending your time looking for your next job, right? Like the, the phones is great if, if you're selling like gong or something. And it's just like, hey, hey. Um, dude, you have a minute I work for gong. <laughs> like, like I was able to FedEx and they're like, okay, well, we only have three options. So um, we're not necessarily buying you, but we will meet with you because again, we only have three options. Yeah. A little different. For sure. So, yeah. What were you going to say, Jesse? I was just going to say, you know, I'll tell you, um, I, I really liked, um, I forget his name, uh, reputation.com. He, he's put out some pretty good things lately. And then uh, I'll tell you another one that's really um, evolved and it's it's kind of, uh, he probably will get in trouble a little bit here, but uh, Andy Muborn. Um, so he, he came to me and actually was asking me about kind of outbound. And I'm like, you know, he, he worked at outreach, right? So, obviously like it's like well, what, what kind of things are people doing right now he, look he doesn't work there anymore and he has a business to run and you know when he looks at that and then he goes out and fires up smartly you know system and or or instantly and he's not even really you don't really even have to pay for those products because they're so inexpensive you know it's more the, the the knowledge of setting up the domains and all that and then he's like whoa i just generated 30 meetings this week i don't even have an sdr on the team right and i'm like i mean as a founder that's a great opportunity. Like every founder should be going outbound with email, right? Like what, it, like what you got to go test that message. You cannot put a sales team. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It's really team? cheap market research. Yeah. I mean, there's no better way. Like you're not going to get that through paid ads. You're not going to get that through, mm -hmm. and, and you're not going to get that through content either. Content is another one just like create. I mean, content can be created on the email, but like just distributing content on social media doesn't mean you're going to get a bunch of, like if you're not like if you're not like Alex Hermosi and you know the Gary you know like those guys that's that's like nauseum for a lot of people like a lot of people can't just go on social media all day and be, be do that that's like a it's like a mental health thing right like I don't think everybody wants to become a sorry but like not everybody wants to become like a social media you know person and that's that's where founders are right now and they need to start to do something that doesn't put them out there in a way where they're not comfortable but that's one of the ways that they can do it i think is and there's just so many people striking it down as an opportunity is so that i think it's a little bit tough you're right one it of, is really hard one, one of the the cool uh demand gen plays that was told with paid ads 
and outbound cold and cold calls work together uh one of the one one of the few advantages for opens you could blast as many people as you want if you could measure some level of intent even outside of the replies you could create ad audiences with those people and then what see if they're interacting Based with on the who ad. replies to your email you're targeting them with ads no see who clicks who opens like if, if, oh if you're, okay so, so then you're, you're you're then creating those whatever level of intent people with ads and if they interact with the ads you know that too then you give that to your sdrs to cold call like if you're going to be cold calling at least have like the people most likely to hit that that are actually kind of interested yeah i was once given a phone book and told to cold call that was like one of my first jobs that was I, I quit after three days to be honest because it was commission only two i'm like no all i used set. to knock door to door for politics all, that was... <laughs> all said i'm gonna make no money uh at home not doing your stupid shit. Mm, yeah this is all good stuff anything else um on ai actually we're running out of time i gotta move on Step four, step by the step. The, the, the future of uh, AI is community. The future of AI community? I don't know, Jesse, yay or nay? It has to be. Uh, yeah, I guess it would be. If so, I don't, I what community mean? I don't really. <laughs> so, you know, I, I, all I'm saying is like, uh, how many more founders are in since AI became commoditized? Thousands, right? Like yeah. more people are in that don't oh, okay. know what the fuck they're doing. Let's be real. Yeah, <laughs> they're chat GPT wrapped in something else. These are not AI founders. There's a lot of people that's technology goes down in price, which AI has. You don't need a data scientist to launch an AI product. Um, there's going to be more and more people flooding the space. Wait, that is 100% true. You can't even argue that there's more and more people flooding the fucking space. Um, uh, most objective thing I've heard. And you know, so like you need communities uh, where they could all learn and, and advance the the profession. For sure, yeah, community is where it's at. Um, and so, fourth topic: step by step guide to building a profitable newsletter. So, um, I I have a newsletter. If you're not on the Whiskey Wednesday newsletter, you can definitely get on that. I help other people with newsletters. Um, it's 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 a hard time right now to have a newsletter, but it's also a really great time to have a newsletter. Um, but Jared, can you kick us off and tell us about some of this greatness about having so, a newsletter right now? You know, I'm going to say like one newsletter company, the next Beehive Convert Kit, whatever. Like a lot of them are great. I'm I'm a homer to to Beehive. Um, the ones that are the best are the ones that focus on deliverability. Beehive like people switch to beehive forget like the easy ui and stuff they, they just fucking deliver and that's big like if newsletter is your business you want to be profitable it's got to hit the inbox otherwise what the fuck are you doing right like your whole business is going to spam uh to be a profitable newsletter day one just charge the first person right like and charge everybody for it uh you'll probably be profitable a hell of a lot quicker but um who's gonna pay for a profitable newsletter alas so, you know, uh, to, to be profitable fast, um, charge quickly for sponsorship or for, for premium membership, give people things that they want. Uh, don't be afraid to take sponsors for low money because to be profitable might only cost you $99 a month for like a Beehive account. So if you just get one out at a hundred bucks, technically you're profitable right away. Yeah. But the thing is, since it's... Um either a side hustle or your full-time job, it you got to do a little bit of work and you got to put in some effort to write an email, but you can also use AI. So I'm curious, Jared, do you use AI in your newsletter? No, I'm just awful at writing uh, and I want to fail with my awfulness. Uh, DJ's offered me uh, the amazing AI tools he has and, and there's just something about uh, my sloppiness that I want to put on there. And I think I'm get, becoming a better writer because I think... Uh, you know ai will take it all over but right now i feel like um having your own voice is really big and, and a newsletter is an extension of that what's cool about a newsletter the reason why I, I like first got open to it um this dude who worked for a newsletter company that like does two hundred thousand subscribers has previously 
his boss was at the hustle, helped them scale to acquisition. He made one comment that just like really stuck with me as a community guy. He said like, when somebody opens your newsletter and keyword opens, right? That's like the most intimate one-to-one -one experience digitally you're going to have with somebody where you have their full attention for seconds or, or minutes if it's good, right? So um, when I heard that, I'm like, I have a community of however many people. I have that one-to-one -one attention with a small percent, relatively small percentage of that. Um, a 50, 60% open rate is, is pretty banging with that. Damn. But uh, we don't know if that open rate is legit, right? Or is Beehive know something I don't know? Uh, yeah, it's probably all fake. So what are we yeah. doing? That's the thing. So Carrie earlier, if she's still watching, on the first topic, Jesse, she was asking, so if on a marketing email um, somebody unsubscribes, do I know that my, mess my email is being delivered? And I didn't stop the conversation then because we were talking about cold email and you don't typically have an unsubscribe on a cold email, but I wanted to bring that back up in terms of deliverability with marketing emails. What would both of you say? Like, what's the best way to make sure that your email is being delivered? So in marketing, it's a little bit different. When I, when I kind of terminal or when I look at the, I think kind of it's all marketing now. But but if I was to say what I'm talking about on market, that what is marketing? Marketing is um emails that they're they're basically saying yes you can email me right they've opted in they're there that one you definitely want to be using open tracking you want to be doing all of the things that sort of good e-commerce marketers are doing right uh and all of that right on that you've got to look at a lot of the engagement tracking there's a lot of advanced uh sort of things that are in the marketing platforms the automation platforms that that will tell you how your deliverability is and you can really trust it because remember the person on the other end opted in theoretically right you shouldn't be adding people that haven't opted in uh, they have to at least accepted the fact that they're part of your newsletter right like that's a better strategy cold emails is a little different cold emails you're basically looking for replies and what I mean by cold email, it could be maybe maybe you have a relationship, but it's somebody you're not communicating with that has never said, I want this email. It's unsolicited by the nature of using those platforms. It's an unsolicited email, right? They're not coming in and it's from a person one to one. And that those ones you want to be very careful on how you operate. There's going to be a lot of changes. The changes are coming daily. So what I mean by that is today, you know, maybe you have open tracking on tomorrow. You might have to turn it off because it could get you blocked. I mean, everybody who uses outreach or sales loft comes from one open tracker, right? In fact, if you want to know who all of their customers are, you could look and see who's on that open tracker. So that's pretty easy. And if you're, you think about it, there's businesses out there that are blocking that want cold emails to be gone. Right. And when you think about the whole process, all they have to do is block that open tracker. It's very simple to do. They could just say anybody who sends an email with this open tracker on, block it. <laughs> you're not getting any more cold emails at that point, right? From that group. So you're going to have to be very, you're going to have to start thinking about that. It's going to become more, I think what's going to happen is organizations are going to stop doing it personally. I, I think they're going to stop sending emails for sales emails eventually. I think at the end of the year, you're going to see it probably completely gone. Um, unless they're using a tool like, you know, like a smart lead or like instantly, which are kind of using lower security models to, to send the emails basically, which is what, what the real truth is. I, I think it's going to be very hard for, uh, you know, them to continue to sustain that because the volume is bad emails just aren't accepted anymore. Right. Report as spam that when they hit that button, it is fatal for your organization. Mm, yeah, sure is. Yeah. Fatal. So Jared, I'm curious. So you were talking about your 57% open rate, like Jesse just was sharing with everybody. So now hopefully everyone in, in the audience understands the difference between the marketing emails and the cold emails and deliverability with both. But like for you, Jared, is there some other like qualitative way you feel like your newsletters are being open? Like people are reaching out to you. You hear like word of mouth on it. Like how do you know that people like your, your newsletter? So I'm figuring that out right now. I'm, I'm, relatively confident people like me with a little bit of uh <laughs> with, yeah. with a little bit of 
so I mean, you look at click through rate. That that's a big metric in newsletters. Um, I'm probably around five percent, which is good, not otherworldly. Um, so that that that's what you have to go on um, when you're getting somebody to pay for an ad in your newsletter. They care about how many clicks are going to the website. Open rate is sexy, like when you don't have any sponsors. Um, I have. 3,000 people and a 61% open rate. Cool. You could probably grab a sponsor or two with that. Um, but how many clicks went to the website? Actually, that's a little more attributable. Yeah, for sure. Oh my gosh. So people in the comments, this is your last chance. I mean, you only have like a few more minutes here with these folks about email and Jesse, let's let's before we move into prizes, which by the way, we're going to be giving away prizes here in a minute. We've got six entries on high level, three for Cherry Assistant, five for Open Draft, six for the headset, three for Lavender, one for Taking Up Space, 17 for Lead Magic, and 12 for Rev Genius. So make sure you're entering to win those prizes. Yes, the Taking Up Space program is a commitment. It's four days a week for one hour, and it goes for like it's what is included there is one month. Um, so there's also a, a community of the participants there that if you don't make it that day, we're, we're talking about what we talked about in the community. So don't let that hold you back. But yeah, I mean, in order to grow, you got to put in a little effort. Um, and with all of that, you know, both of you, this, this was absolutely incredible. I don't see anybody asking any more questions about email, which just blows my mind because February is right around the corner and just, I don't know. I, I would just, anyone here in the comments, like, wouldn't you love to like be able to have your emails written for you? Or are you, if you're in the comments or is there anyone here who's like, no, cold email is going to die. Like, I'm just kind of curious what the audience is thinking. One quick cue for Jesse. Who's the saltiest person on LinkedIn right now? <laughs> um, I'll, I'll tell you who it is. It's, um, uh, <laughs> There was a little bit of a group, and uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say it. Um, so it's the it's probably it's probably the guy who does algorithms, uh, and I think he's got brilliant content out there. But uh, he's completely salty. Uh, Richard, I believe his name is, and and I think he's a I think he's a smart dude. I think he's got a lot to offer. Uh, but one of the things I noticed, like you know, as soon as those blue checks started flying out there. Yes, he, he called for some transparency. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and so I, this is the LinkedIn top voice, just yeah. to be clear, when you're talking about blue checks. Yeah, the blue, the like top expert thing. I mean, I, th I didn't even know I was getting it, by the way. And I was I was seeing people attacking me. Like, I was like, what is going on here? Like, this is, I don't even, I didn't even know, right? Like, it wasn't like, they, they didn't send me a DM or anything and let me know, right? But, you know, it's not a big deal. Like, it's, it's not that big of a deal. And this guy uh, was like, we need some transparency from LinkedIn. I think he was upset because he has a huge following and his whole... His whole business is based on LinkedIn algorithm and everything. And like, he was so angry. I thought, and I, I think that was a little salty. I, I'm usually, I kind of take a different approach. I'm a little happy with, you know, when people can like, you know, Jared's won some great things this week and, you know, I'm, I'm excited for the guy, right? Like I, I think he should do well. Right. But I don't know. I thought that was a little salty personally, but there was a lot, there was a lot of salt on that one. Uh, there were a lot of people who I actually didn't expect to be salty too, to that did it a little bit, but you got to just, the salt is fun. I mean, I, I, I'm salty sometimes. A lot of times I'm salty, actually. But, like, it's a little fun. You kind of have to do it. And, I, you know, you certainly respect the people who are a little salty, too, right? It's, it's kind of fun. I mean, it keeps the engagement, the comments yeah. going, I guess, at the end of the day. Um, but, you know, we have to give away prizes. So before we do... Give, give away the blue check as a prize. Oh, I wish is we could give away a blue check. <laughs> and hook me up with blue checks to give away. Um, we got to get to the guru of the week. Ah, ah. Let's do it. Who is the guru of the week? Jared and Jesse or you both these days, because both of you were on this show before. Jesse, I think both of you were actually on twice. Jared, the first time you came on first and we didn't go live because I didn't have the technology figured out. <laughs> whoever I would probably vote for probably blocks me on LinkedIn is all I'll say. <laughs> well, the guru, it can be, you know, like it can be a real guru like Richard, or it can be like someone that you think everyone should go follow, like a legit guru that we think is a real guru. I have, I think we should spam in the comments right now and just blow them up. Like, who is it? I, I, I have 
two answers. One, I want to always give a shout out to, to Mr. Tom Slocum, who came correct with these new visuals this week of him in like mobster like like stuff that are crushing it. Uh, so shout out to Slocum bringing that out. Follow him. And then uh, Jason Hassenberg coming in hot with his sour takes. Um, shout out Jason, who uh, was, was a previous Rev Genius teammate. Just want to give him all the support and love. He's in the comments saying he'll pay $40. Everyone else wouldn't pay 40 cents. Thank you very much. <laughs> How about yeah, you? I, I'm going to go with, uh, you know, I think really, and this is somebody to follow, like not, not really the other way around, but Tom, Tom Slocum, man, I think he continually delivers top quality content and he's also like a really good dude and and he just he's constantly out there he's just he's a he's out there he's he's friendly he runs a good business you know if you need that type of service for uh and that pretty much everybody does so you should be calling him uh but basically like you know i think he's gonna i think he's excelling i think he's hitting his his uh his stride and i think he's going to continue to to execute here i think he's a really smart dude and he knows how to combine sales and technology together. And uh, I would go with Tom Slocum. Well, there you have okay. it, Whiskey Wednesday audience. Those are the gurus of the week. Ooh, ooh. All right, so uh, now we get to give away some prizes. And I told everybody before we would that I would have you guys explain what you're giving away. So I'm gonna pull it back up on the screen. Jared, could you please tell everyone what they're getting if they tag Rev Genius? Yeah, so I had a list of 4,000 or 2,000 or something CROs that I'm going to give away or, or something similar with leaders. I, I need to find that spreadsheet. And and uh, 30 minutes with me to teach you and do whatever you want um, professionally. Yes, I love that. Enter to win there. <laughs> Jesse's eyes go. <laughs> Which Jesse? <laughs> the, the other Jesse. So other Jesse... I you mean, what I've asked for, Ula. <laughs> yes. Can you please tell the audience about these two hundred fifty thousand credits of lead? Yeah. Numbers? So, what does that actually get you? So we've uh, we're hey, people weren't happy at my company when I told them we were giving away two hundred fifty thousand on this show, but <laughs> uh, we, you know, so basically, it's I mean, I can't say a lifetime, but I mean, if you know, two hundred fifty thousand e email addresses valid is a lot of emails. <laughs> Uh, we're giving that away on the show today. And to put that into perspective, I mean, you know, it's valid emails, 250,000, like you're going to go through, I mean, you could definitely email people for, and that's what really we want you to do, but we're giving that away. It's 250,000 email. You can use it on the platform. It enriches or sorry, it validates the emails. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll send that to you right there. You just have to go sign up and you just upload your list. I mean, you could upload shit, upload the whole internet. It doesn't even matter at 250. I mean, that's pretty much everybody on LinkedIn, right? No, I'm kidding. It's 800 million, but still like you could upload a lot, a big list and then just start emailing. I mean, that's what we really want to do is get everybody emailing again. It's really weird. If you're not emailing people right now, it's a good idea. And you don't have to do all the kind of weird social media stuff to do it absolutely and for the record linkedin hit you could you could make money without a personal brand by the way i just want to say that i don't mean to cut you off like you can make a it's lot true. of money without a personal brand you Excellent. do need linkedin to, to to scrape you probably want a linkedin account but nobody needs to know who you are hmm. you could go full anon and just print if you just had the commitment and jared jared's seen the way i mean he's now i would jared is a pretty uh a uh, pretty lethal emailer now and uh, you know i don't just hand that out to you know to anybody like candy but this guy knows how to send emails now <laughs> jared you, you know what i'm talking about right so i yes i do and that's that's why i keep tagging in here uh member grid dj and i are gonna work on uh and i, I said jesse a quick text on this just like an enrichment solution for full email list for newsletters it's just a different use case and a mm -hmm. different ui I have a feeling I have a feeling we'll roll that one out for you and you can go you can run it. I love it. It's sold. Done. Mem 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 member grid is the name so far. <laughs>
right. You like well, that? Watch out for the next big sass. It's member grid coming at you. I love it. Enrich your newsletter data. I hope this, you, you'll be that? able to use it for, for, you'll be able to use it for 13 minutes for free. And then we're going to paywall you. I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect, I'm, I'm, I'm still voting for Rev Genius to go full paid. We'll talk I, about I might, that offline. I, it's actually, it's, it's a good idea. If it's you a don't. good idea. I'll charge you. Okay. I'll pay. I'll be the first to pay. <laughs> you heard it here, everyone. Rev Genius. I'll be the first to pay for Rev Paywall. Genius. I'll be the first. I swear to God, I'll pay for the, the, the damn thing. If you're not in Rev Genius and you want to join, you're running out of time to be there for Why free. You? So you better go join. 250,000 credits is the best offer. I've got to guess Whiskey Wednesday has Wednesday has seen. That is spectacular. That yes. that's for your whole SDR team of 25 for like a year. Yeah. I get to the primary. Get back to the primary, y'all. Let's give away some prizes. I'm going to go ahead and pull up these prizes. Let's get them out so high level. Who wants a swag pack? We've got Sarah, Mark, Whiskey Wednesday, whoops, Jared, David, Mark, Sarah, David Taggart. Congratulations. You are getting a swag pack from high level. You got to love that. And now we're going to go ahead and give away Cherry Assistant. So who are our lucky virtual assistant um, people in need? Let's see. We've got Jared in there. We've got Sarah in there and Christopher. Oh, Whiskey Wednesday can't win. So I'm going to draw it again. Sometimes we accidentally write Cherry Assistant in the comments when we're talking about them and then it pulls up. But... The winner's gonna be Jared. Sorry, me. Getting 10 free hours of virtual assistance. Oh, training. I know exactly how I'm gonna use that too. They're gonna, if, if, if that virtual assistant reaches out to you on LinkedIn, just say yes, give them the email, and we will add you to the subscription list. I love that. There you go. Open draft. Who wants some blogs? We've got five people here. Let's gonna go Sarah, Aviv, Jared, Christopher, Jared, Christopher, Jared, Sarah, Christopher Hardy, congratulations. He's uh, one of those cold calling kings out there. Let's see him write some blogs. I love that. Let's go two, prize three. I don't know. It's a great prize. Dreamer's a little glitchy tonight. I don't know what's going on, but we're going to give away this headset. So I need a wireless headset because there were six of you who put this in there. I see Sarah. I see Matt. I see Virginia. I see Alexa. I see Erica. Matt, congratulations. You are the winner of this week's wireless headset. That is incredible. Congratulations. We will be connecting all of you with these brands after the show via email. So if you could head over to reveting.com slash winner and fill out the form to give us any information, that would be great. We will hook you up. Let's go ahead and give away lead magic and rev genius. Which one should we do first? Oh, here we go. Holy 21 on lead magic. Who's getting the course and who's getting 200,000 oh, credits of data. Bob, David, Jared, Sarah, Tom Slocum! Oh my gosh! Imagine your night. That's 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 some guru that's energy. Um, wow! Talk talk about the universe conspiring for him. That's good. Two fifty. Oh. I'm crediting him in the platform right now. Yes. Dude. Tom Slocum's wow. account is is Jared at JaredRobin.com. So I look forward <laughs> to that. Wow, homie, my homie. I love that. All right, final prize. Here we go. It is Rev Genius. 13 here. Who is it going to be? Oh, Bob. Congratulations, Bob. You are the winner of the free sheet of data in 30 minutes with Jared. So you're going to be leveling up your life here. That is amazing. You guys are both incredible. I'm very grateful for both of you. You both have been just 
incredible examples for myself and for many people out there. And I know like maybe I see Jesse's like eyes going back and forth. So like maybe it makes you feel weird to like hear all these things, but you really do need to know like how big of an asset you are to the whole community on LinkedIn, as well as the communities that you've created and you've inspired. If it weren't for you two, this show might not even be here. Like, let's be honest. We were in SAS Yacht Club. I don't know. I might have came in with like 50 people or so. And um, it was it was a really great, inspiring time in my life. And, you know, I met a lot of awesome people. But Jesse, you have been that person who when I was trapped in the SAS life and was I, I had issues. I mean, I had mental health issues. I had it was really tearing me down. I'm almost going to cry. It was your both of your encouragement that made me go, oh, my God, I'm going to cry, like made me make that boost. So thank you. Like you guys are doing this on LinkedIn and you're doing it for a lot of people. So thank you for what you're doing. I'm sorry to get emotional, but I I'm just an emotional woman at the end of the day. So I don't really care. And it's important. Sorry. You know, there aren't enough people like you out there giving and giving and giving. So thank you for everything you're doing. Yep, appreciate it. I could, I could cry too. I know. And with that, I'm going to end and I'm going to ask that, Jesse, will you tell the audience how they can reach you if they want to reach out to you? Sure. Yeah. Just DM. Uh, you can just DM me on LinkedIn. I, I definitely do read all my um, LinkedIn email, uh, messages. So definitely DM me. Uh, you know, and thank you, Jesse. I, I love this show. I've always been a big fan of it. And uh, it's the, the types of uh, people that are on here, great group. And, uh, I think I think the the best days are to come. Uh, I think there's a lot of opportunity for everybody right now. I think uh, you know everybody can build their own systems, their own SaaS, their own everything. Yeah. Really, you don't have to be. You can be an agency, but you can also build uh, recurring billing models with newsletters and things like that. You don't have to be kind of strapped behind something that you're not engaged with, and it's just a lot easier to wake up in the morning and go to work and do what yes. you want. So. Yes, that's exactly right. I see so many people out there just living this negative Miserable. life. And I was there. And you're right. There's things you can do to get out of it. Jared, how about you? How can people reach you after the show? Uh, get me on LinkedIn. Uh, forward slash Jared Robin. And to echo Jesse and Jesse sentiment, like all three of us, we haven't been lifetime entrepreneurs. We're, I believe, all of us out of our 20s. So like we, we've reinvented ourselves put ourselves out there and, and have done it through helping others. Uh, there's a magic that happens when you do that. I can't explain it. Slocum knows it. I, uh, and, and a lot of people in this chat do too. There's just uh, something wild that, that just comes back. So do that. Take, take the step and then just right. fucking give endlessly, like, like, like recklessly, like give out spreadsheets of 250,000 for, yeah. uh, for, yeah, for, for, for fun. Right. Like watch what happens. Jesse's going to be a, a, a bajillionaire soon. And the other Jesse is going to be a bajillionaire as well. That really is, I think the main lesson that I I've taken away from both of you. And I've also used myself is to give, 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 give. That's what inspired the prizes on the show. People get to show up and get prizes, but thank you both for showing up. I know we're after hours, so it's been a late night. We are still going to have an after party. It's only going for an hour. If you would like to join, you can go to reveting.com slash after hyphen party. And we're going to be there. I'll be there. You'll find me there. And um, thank you both so much again for coming on. Any last words you want to share before we part ways? If not, thank you again for being here. I'm going to go ahead and close by, this out. By, by, by lead magic, by... Uh reveting services and win and win and join rev genius and get ready to be charged i swear I'll it's not charge I, I'll, I'll be exiting that chat the, oh, yeah I'll, I'll i'll give you buy me coffee with a minimum donation of thousand dollars <laughs> all right, all right that's awesome well peace out yeah, yeah. folks blue we'll see you next time maybe next year thank you again all right peace out Thank you.